video, we're going over the best shooting badges for lockdowns in NBA 2K23. If you're new to the channel, my name is Lance. I'm the head coach for Bucks Gaming. And so how we're going to do this, you can see there's three categories, best, secondary, and worst. And all the badges for shooting badges are in the corner here. We're going to go one by one, and I'm going to give you an explanation of how I feel about the badge, and then we'll rank them. And if you disagree or agree, love to hear it in the comments so we can kind of learn and grow together with this. So first badge we're going to look at is Amped. And so Amped, I'm going to put on worst or kind of do not use. Uh, amped is really for low stamina and it's a lock. Uh, you're really not going to have those situations where you're dribbling around and doing too much on the offensive side of the ball to be able to run amped. And so I just don't think it's a necessary badge per se to run on a lockdown on the offensive end. So if, if there was any reason why stamina ha affected your defense, Amp could, but it's only for shooting. So Amp's going to go on the worst or do not use. The second badge we're going to look at is Limitless Range. So my Limitless Range to a secondary. Uh, so if you play park, you sit in hash, or there's a chance you'll come hash, limitless range is good. Uh, overall, if you have the badge points, I think it's good to equip it. I'm pretty sure limitless range is a tier two badge for like six, seven locks. Could be wrong. Uh, but limitless range definitely has its ability to make you more dynamic. So even in prime or rec, if you're running uh, with your team, they call your point guard calls you to flare, or maybe you're coming up the court and you can stop hash, be able to have limitless range just in, take, just in case you take one too many far, one too many steps back, and then you're out of that range. This is going to make sure that you can hit consistent from the top of the key, which is which is big in transition and in moments. Uh, the next badge is Green Machine. So I'm going to add Green Machine to the best. I think Green Machine, especially when you get like pro am, competitive pro am. Uh, being able to just green your shot so that first shot goes green it's going to be really really good for you from then on of uh, we of course we know the, it kind of stacks your greens with the green machine so try to get that going early uh, but the biggest thing as a corner player uh, or even in park is you just got to hit consistently as one of the corner players so if your point guard is doing all the work to get open and then your guy leaves and he throws the pass and you miss your shot you you know that's just kind of demoralizing as a team so green machine can help you you know consistently hit but you of course got to start it up by by greening one of your first shots next badge is gonna be dead eye dead i'm gonna add to worst i just don't think it's a great badge to have as a lock uh dead eye needs a buff it needs to be kind of boosted up Guard up, I think, is better to run than Dead Eye, uh, but you're not going to really need Dead Eye in the corner uh, when when those contests come. Uh, there's other badges here in a little bit we'll get into that are definitely better than Dead Eye. It has its situations where you could put it, um, but until the badge I think is kind of boosted based on what I'm hearing around the community, uh, it's not right now. So Dead Eye is definitely going to be one less not equipped for now, but maybe in the future we could look to come back, remake this, or relook at this and move it to some other place. Next one's going to be Blinders. So blinders, I'm actually going to put as a secondary. So blinders is a secondary badge when you're in the corner. Uh, this is really for rec, pro am. Uh, when you're a corner player and the contest comes from you know the top, uh, blinders can help kick in and give you a little you know a little less amount of uh, contest to your shot. So blinders has its situation in the past. It was a must have as a corner player because that's really where your closeouts usually happen if if the corner player is playing aggressive, kind of playing high. Uh, this year, I have heard that blinders isn't as strong as what it used to be, or uh, is based on what I've heard. But it's still one of those badges. If you could run it, might as well put it on because of kind of the situation you're being put in. So I do feel like this is a good secondary badge to have if you can afford it, because it's going to be it's going to activate in a lot of situations, but even on in park. Next badge going to be space creator. Going to put this one as a worse slash do not equip. Uh, I mean, you can be dynamic as a small four depending on your play style, but usually if your defense is high, your shooting's high, your physicals are good, you probably don't have a ton of shooting to add this type of a badge. So this badge is really maybe for your, like, your point guard, your shooting guards, those types of things. The space creator shouldn't have a big like piece of your game as a lockdown defender uh, in 2K. So we're going to put that as worst. Volume shooter, we're also going to put as worst. And so volume shooter, you're just not going to get a ton of shots. Now, if you're a lock getting a ton of shots, you could think about uh, running this. But most locks are going to get, you know, maybe three to five shots a game, maybe a little bit more than that. And so for volume shooter, in, in those catch and shoot, shoot situations, you're just not going to get enough of it to really help boost you, in my opinion. So I just think that you're wasting batch points adding it. If you're a really key part of your team and you're taking a ton of shots, maybe volume shooter could have a place in it. But overall... 90% of your lockdown defenders aren't going to be put in situations where you could get the full effectiveness of this badge. So we're going to keep it as worst. 
Next match is Agent 3. Also going to put in the worst. Uh, the reason why is, again, now, there is a place for Agent 3 if it's in your game, if you can afford it. Agent 3 is usually a pretty expensive badge. Uh, shooting those corner fades is always good. You know, maybe you flare up, catch, go corner fade. Uh, but again, just if it comes to the play style of like a normal kind of pro-am slash rec team, you really should just be focused on your catch and shoots. Uh, but if you're being put in a lot of like last second sh situations, you need to get a shot up. Agent 3 definitely has a place where it can be utilized. But... That be like for specific play styles, a lot of your locks aren't going to really be able to utilize this badge effectively or have enough badge points to really equip it with some of these other ones we're going to be using. Our next badge, Corner Specialist, and that's going to go to Best. So, like I said, as a lock, you're in the corner. You need to be able to hit your shots. That's like the number one thing you need to do on the other side of the court. You're going to go play defense for 24 seconds. You're going to come down. Point guard is going to do all the work. You need to be able to hit your shots. So make sure you're stacking the badges that give you the best chance to hit your shots in the corner. Because that's really where you're going to be at. So corner specialist equipped with green machine. Just going to give you a boost. And corner specialist, I'm pretty sure, kicks in on corner mid ranges. And so this badge, like we talked about earlier with Agent 3, I meant with fades. I think... Could be wrong if i'm wrong let me know in the comments but i think corner specialist does kick in when you fade in the corner as well i think that kicks in so you can kind of get a two for one here when it comes to being able to kind of fade and shoot threes uh from the corner as a log so corner specialism must have you definitely need to have this uh catch and shoots the next one i'm actually going to add catch and shoot to secondary which could be kind of people might not agree with me uh but the reason why I'm putting this secondary is because you do, catch shoots a good badge. Uh, I do think it goes to tier three with locks, so it's more expensive to unlock. Could be wrong, uh, but with catch and shoot, you are going to get those catch and shoot situations 100%. It's a badge that that's why it's on secondary. You could absolutely run if you need to, but I think that this other badge up in a little bit is way better. And we'll talk about that when we get there. But definitely catch and shoot if you have enough badge points, run it. I'm not saying it's a bad badge. I'm not saying to not use it. I just think there's other ones that can be used in more situations, per se. Uh, but this is where it was one of those ones I had to decide with the badge points, like, where do I put this one? So secondary, it's the first for a reason because it, it's usable. Uh, and that's really all I have for catch and shoot. So next is comeback kid. So comeback kid, I'm going to add to worst. Uh, I just I'm not a fan of badges that only activate whenever you're down. So we're gonna stay away from those types of badges. If we're down in the game and that badge is what's carrying us, as especially as a lock when you're only getting a few shots. So uh, there's another badge later we'll talk about that's pretty good. Next one is slippery off ball. I'm putting on worst again. It, this just really comes down to just the badge points. I do think that slippery off ball maybe has a little bit of usage, but again. You have to be a knockdown shooter just to make sure that you're not kind of, you know, having bad possessions for your team by just missing wide open shots. Next badge is going to be Mini Magician. We're also going to put as worst. Uh, shooting fading mids. Usually as a lock in Pro-Am and Rec, you're catching it, maybe taking one or two dribbles. You might get a front fade, but again, how many times are you really going to do that? And that, that's really what it comes down with Mini Magician is you already have corner specialists boosting your corner shots from the three in the mid range. And then from there, it's just like, I think Mini Magician is just kind of overkill. And then, whereas you could use those points in other areas to kind of really boost your players. So that's where Mini Magician comes down to the worst ones. Clutch Shooter, so this is going to be debatable. This is what I think the best. I think Clutch Shooter is great. So I've heard that Clutch Shooter activates from the third quarter and on. That there's a, like, it could be like a, me a mess up within how the badge works. But the reason why I, want, I like Clutch Shooter is late shot clock situations or late quarter situations, fourth quarter situations when your team needs a basket. This is a badge I only recommend running on bronze, nothing higher. So I'm going to put it on best, but this is best to only run on bronze. Do not run Hall of Fame, gold, none of that. Running on bronze, it's just going to give you an insanely high boost to all your shots. And so like if your point guard, you know, last play of the game gives it to you, or any of that type of stuff, Clutch Shooter is going to activate, give you a huge boost. So that's why I have it on best. It's actually a very strong badge, but and it's cheap badge. So it's, it's run on, on the best one, but only run on bronze. So the next badge is Guard Up. Guard Up is going to be worst slash bad or slash do not use. Guard Up is actually not a bad badge overall. I just don't think you're going to have enough badges to really put this one where I think these other badges are better. Like, Corner, green, clutch, catch, blinders, limitless are all better than guard up in my opinion. 
Uh, you do get contested in the corner. You're going to have some of the biggest players on the court guarding you. And just, I just think it's just one of those situations where your badge points kind of come into play here. What's kind of important. I like to have the ability to just make sure if I'm open, I'm hitting my shots. And if I get contested, I get contested. Uh, but that's where like blinders kind of kicks in. So if you feel like guard up is better than blinders for yourself, then this might be a situation where you use guard up instead of blinders. But I think blinders for me and for most locks is going to be in more situations than, than guard up is going to be. So that's why we're going to keep blinders ahead of guard up. Guard up is one of those, again, like 50, 50, it could kind of jump up based on your play style, what you think is better. Uh, but in general, I think this is the right setup. And then the last badge is going to be claymore. And that is going to be your number one badge to have in 2k 23 as a lock. So it is going to be the first, these are in order, except the do not equip is not in order. But the best and secondary is in order of the badges that you absolutely, I feel like, need to have as a lockdown. You're standing in the corner. You're not moving a lot. You get those four seconds. You get a massive boost to your shoot, your shots. So your point guard hits you late. You've been standing there. Now Claymore kicks in. Corner specials kicks in. You know, if you're green the last shot, green machine. And then, like, just with Claymore and corner specialist on kind of like your style of play absolutely now if you're a lock that cuts and moves and does all this type of stuff then claymore is not going to get its full use so make sure that you know you're being smart in certain situations to get the full use i think it takes one second for like the first tier and then it kind of tears up to up to a max of four seconds so that's how claymore kind of works but even then if you're moving corner specialist is going to kick in and then that's where maybe if you get to the catch and shoot range it, you could also kind of get a boost from there but that is like the, I think these are the best way to set up your lock for shooting. So these are like foundational pieces. Play style matters, of course. So if these don't fit your play style. I would still kind of try to stay in by the tiers I've set up. Uh, but of course I can't, I can't make this for every single type of play style. So and that'll be it for this video. Like I said earlier, my name is Lance. I'm the head coach of Bucks Gaming. I'm a professional coach in the NBA 2K League. I have a Discord in the description below where I'm trying to get some great NBA 2K players who want to learn more about the 2K League. Maybe you want to play 2K with myself, whether it be Park, Rec, Pro-Am. And so if you're interested, like I said, links below. Go ahead and join. If this video helped you, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.